Section 12 of Captain Billy's Whizbang, Volume 1, Number 11, August 1920. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Captain Billy's Whizbang, Volume 1, Number 11, August 1920, by W. H. Fawcett. Jests, Jokes, and Jingles. Lights out, and then. Father said so. Tommy, do you go to bed very early, Mrs. Peck? Mrs. Peck. Yes, Tommy, sometimes, when I feel tired. You wouldn't go so early if you were married to my father, would you? Oh, Tommy, you funny boy, why not? Because my father told mother that if he were your husband, he'd make you sit up and take notice. Cause for joy. Old King Cole was a merry old soul. Don't doubt about it for a minute. He called for his pipe, and he called for his bowl, and that bowl had something in it. A Stag Party from the Highland Press. Mr. and Mrs. George D. Stagg of San Bernardino, California, are the proud parents of a baby boy. Mr. Stagg is still in the military hospital. Listen to him rave. A recent robbery disclosed the fact that large quantities of whiskey have been sent to insane asylums for medicinal purposes. Men wishing to take the examination for insanity will please leave their names at the front office. The line forms to the right. Don't crowd. I'd like to get some soap, she told the clerk. Would you care for toilet soap, the salesman asked. No, she replied. I want it for my face. Adam was a wise guy, so they say. He shoved his rib against the fence, and Eve came too next day. One of our Robinsdale farmer boys who was active in the big blowout in France was explaining the mysteries of a barbed wire entanglement to a sweet country miss. Using the pasture fence and country road ditch to simulate trench conditions, our farmer doughboy went over the top at the zero hour, much to her delectation. She joined in the second attack but our friends said the entire battle effect was spoiled when her skirt caught in the barbs, and she exclaimed in a very unmilitary manner, Move over, kiddo, until I blow my nose. Lights Out and Then By Jane Gates 11 o'clock p.m. A dainty little ankle, adorned by the lace ruffle of a silken pair of pajamas, is drawn under the warm, crisp covers. A little brunette head is nestled more comfortably on the soft pillows. Two sleepy gray-blue eyes glance demurely but searchingly around the room. A tired yawn is suppressed by tiny rosy fingertips. A small round arm reaches upward, and presto, the lights go out. A moment of struggling is encountered in the gloom follows a turning over, and suddenly the shapely little head is jerked breathlessly under the covers. Part of a minute elapses, then, Ow! Help! Murder! Police! Oh! Oh! Oh, my God! A man! A frantic struggle to turn on the lights commences, but the poor, frightened little slip of a girl can't find the switch. An anxious pater rushes in amidst the hysterical screams of his exceedingly excited wifey, who just knows that she will collapse. Two minutes later, with the lights on, daughter is snuggled securely in the pater's protecting arms. But where is the man? A faint sound arises from under the blankets, at which daughter Fanshawn screams, and mother, true to her prediction, faints. Oh, how terrible is the suspense of that fateful night! Presently, the sound is converted into an unmistakable mew. Tabby innocently emerges from the covers, and demure little Fanchon very conveniently cries, Oh, hell, it's only the cat! End of section 12